Hello and welcome to the Cheese Room Podcast. This is Brendan, your host for the show. Joining me to look back on quite a bizarre, um, eventful game against Chelsea. I still can't gather words. Like I was going to do a run sheet, but there's not enough words in the English language that can sum up what we've just witnessed at the, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But to help us try and do that, first up is HG. How are you doing, mate? I'm, I'm all right. I, I mean, I'm, if we don't talk about football, I'm doing really well. Um, but otherwise... Uh, you know, life's good. Life's good. <laughs> also joining is Seb. How are you doing, Seb? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, just kind of come down. I think back back down to where that was. Uh, I don't know. I felt really tense throughout the whole game, even though it was quite enjoyable. Um, my heart was going certainly from like minute 46 to 75 when I thought we were <laughs> we might actually do it uh, and pull off the uh, the unthinkable. So. Um, yeah, I don't know, not a lot to talk about. We'll make it a short one, eh? <laughs> <laughs> this is it. There was so much. Like, so let's try and work. So, five disallowed goals. Was it just five? Uh, two offside, yeah, two, two red cards, um, an injury to Van der Ven. That, that for me, uh, is, is the real killer. But when, when, when he went off injured, I was already had that weird feeling that Spurs give me in these games. But when, when you saw him go down with that injury. That 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 was when it was like this isn't this isn't going right this isn't going right. Hang but on, um, Brendan, can I stop you for one second? Sure. Look, Keith, Doctor Tottenham Post. Like, <laughs> had I said we were going to win, you just said I just jinxed it in that way by saying that Spurs do Doctor Tottenham's and Doctor Tottenham things happening. It's not, does that really count as a jinx? We all know these things happen. You'd be a fool to not think that that could happen. Now, I didn't have money on all the things that happened tonight, but still, this is Spurs, Pochettino's return, Chelsea. Everything played into the result we saw. Not how we got there, but the end result. Come on, Keith. I didn't jinx it. I'm just experienced at this. <laughs> yeah, well, let's let's crack into it. Let's try and... Bring some structure to to what unfolded tonight. As and let's start as we always do with the lineup. Uh, start with UHG. We um, we had a doggy back, which was a surprise because I had some ITK telling me that that it was Davies again who didn't even make the matchday squad, and uh, Brendan Johnson for Richarlison. Um, how were you feeling with that with that lineup? I, mean, I was pretty happy. I, like I mean, I thought I think we all think we're doggies better than Davies in that role and. Brennan Johnson down the left is still pretty new, but Richarlison has not really convinced. So it felt like an attacking move and one worth doing. I, I wasn't upset by the team at all. So you said, um, again, I'm similar to HG. I thought it was a, a, a strongest lineup. Uh, Rishi, I thought maybe Rishi's pressing would have helped, but I think maybe the plan was um, for him to come on as an impact sub later on. Um, but how are you with the lineup? Yeah, pleased. I liked the, the the change with Johnson because I think the the plan was to to give him space to run into, um, and I think that's how it certainly played out for the, the small amount of time that he was he was on the pitch. Um, yeah, he uh, he excites me actually, Johnson. I said it right right from the start. So nothing against Richarlison, but I was I was pleased, and obviously I was pleased uh, about with Doggy because. Um, like you say, to talk about Ben Davis, and he didn't have the greatest um, half against Crystal Palace. Actually, when Emerson came on, I thought he was the the better player in that role uh, in the Palace game. So, um, yeah, good, uh, no problem with it at all. Hmm. And we started well. HG like that that opening 10, 15, maybe we um, we were playing some really good stuff. Got the goal, had the second one chalked off, which was so tight as well. And but it, it there was no feeling to it was it was feisty. But in no way could we have foreseen what happened after. No, I mean, this is it. Like, this is obviously the reason, the real reason why we lost. There's a good old Davo <laughs> flown in from Sydney for a couple of weeks, went to the game, showed up late, because that's what you would do once you've travelled halfway around the world. But still, gets there, we're 2-0 up, and obviously we end up losing 4-1. Feels like that England-Germany game from the World Cup 10 or so years ago, where you know, it somehow it should have been 2-2 and we lost 4-1. Um yeah, like we, we played really well early on. I mean, Johnson was an, was a great addition. Having speed down the down the wings really does help. Um, Kulusevski obviously got the goal <laughs> by actually shooting. Shooting is a good thing for Kulusevski to do. I just uh, 
like I, I think Chelsea they wanted to press us early on, and we struggled a little bit. But when we did break through the press, we looked good. We looked like we could hurt them every time we went forward. The pass from Johnson for Sun's disallowed goal was perfect. I mean, on his weaker side, it was a perfect, perfect cross. We're talking about you know what the, the a toenail that he was actually offside. Um, so we, we can't be too upset about those first 15, 20 minutes. We, we, we had played really well and we looked like we, we did look like we were on our way to a, to a comfortable win. Yeah. Do you feel the same Seb? Like it, it was, that's had that second goal been, been given. I don't think there, I don't think the game would have, well, obviously we'd have got two goals, but the game wouldn't have gone as, as it did like that. We would have calmed it down. Second goal. I, I, maybe it was the disallowing of that goal that got us het up. But we, um, yeah. we seem to lose our heads a bit. Uh, yeah, before the second goal, in, in inverted commas, there, Chelsea did have a chance or two. Uh, I think Vicario pulled off a, a very good save um, down to his left. One-handed save, really strong hand. I mean, I've uh, yeah, eulogised about Vicario in, uh, in countless pods now. Uh, what what a signing. Um, but yeah, the, the, then there was the, the, the doggy challenge, um, that I thought was Romero actually at first because it was in the, the the area of the pitch that he would normally attack. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I watched it on Sky. Gary Neville said it was a straight red. Um, you can't do challenges like that anymore. I didn't agree. Um, thought he won the ball. Um, and yes, it was a forceful challenge. Yes, he goes in. Yes, he makes contacts. Oh, well, he, to be fair to Sterling, he kind of got, got out of the way of it. And I guess it could have been worse, um, but I didn't think it was a red card because in my book, and maybe I'm old fashioned, but if, if you get the ball, um, don't really care if you take the man. And obviously we've we've, we've seen, a, seen that play out twice tonight. We'll come on to the, the Romero one later. But um, that for me was the kind of um, pivot, if you like it, in the, in the change of the game. Chelsea stood up to everything that we, um, that we, we threw at them. Um, both kind of physically and, and tactically. Um, and the game then kind of descended for about 15 minutes into some kind of fast where we, we lost our heads. Vicario, even though I've said how, how, how good he was with saves, played dangerous balls into um, into defence stroke midfield. Van der Ven gave the ball away a couple of times. Udogi looked a little bit like a rabbit in the headlights. And we have seen that before. Um, just Just... I mean, he's so young, so it's it's one of those one of those. There was ten fifteen minutes where it just it was it was a little bit farcical. It was the most out of control I've seen this this season. It's the most out of control I've seen anyone play this season. We it was just <laughs> it was bizarre. HG, it, it was that sort of I'd say from twenty minutes till till the end of the first half, I think, where we just lost all shape, all discipline, and. I, 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 there's so many things to talk about. The 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 go, Kai Sedo goal. First of all, would you have disallowed that? Do you think that was the right call? Because no, that's a goal. That's a goal. Yeah. Like I don't, I, I don't like even if Jackson was again that toenail or the heel spur or whatever it was offside. No, it's it's a good goal. I don't think he was in Vicario's line of sight. Vicario dived for the ball. So I I, I I was amazed that got chalked off. I was then amazed that they gave the penalty and then it was a red card. It just it just felt like at halftime I was talking to, you know, obviously the rest of the cheese room gang, and I thought, to be fair, one one and Spurs down to ten was probably the right situation, bearing in mind the challenges that had been made. But Romero should have gone long before he went for the silly little kick out. Like I mean, that, that happened maybe five minutes prior, and, and and you just you wonder like Spurs, we, we we got ourselves involved in a battle that we you know our, our midfielders as much as they're as much as we had lots of players in that midfield area, none of them are real tacklers. Like you know, Bissouma gets yellow cards left, right, and centre. You don't look at Madison as being that kind of player to put a foot in and win the ball. And there were plenty of 50-50s that we lost. Because Caicedo and Enzo and Gallagher were just more forceful in that area, so it, it, it was it was an, it was an awkward time because we knew we were losing those challenges, and so it almost made us try harder to win the next one. And maybe that's what happened with Romero and the penalty. Like I don't think that's a penalty. I think if he wins the ball when you catch the man as you follow through, what are you supposed to do? Like you want, I, I don't understand how you're supposed to. Like, it's like a baseball swing that stops over the plate. You can't do that. 
Like momentum takes you through. The connects with Enzo's leg. Well, like, I'm sorry. Like you've got legs, I've got legs, and the ball's between us. It, it, I, I don't think that was a red card. Hmm. I could see why they gave it as a penalty, but even that felt a bit stupid because, frankly, they should have just let the goal stand and go on with the game. It, 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 I, I, the, the referee lost control of it. Spurs lost their minds a little bit. And to be fair, Chelsea won a few tackles and it gave them pressure. And I feel like Chelsea might be, I mean, I don't really remember another team actually trying to press our back two or our back whoever until tonight. Chelsea were the first side to actually say, no, we're going to go at you and we're going to see if you can play through us. And once we were unable to do so, it caused massive issues. Mm. Well, so first on the, the sending off, do you agree with HG there? Because I thought similarly to the Udogi one, it wasn't the because he was facing him. It wasn't like it was from behind. It's the force. And I think that's what Oliver was trying to explain to Son and to, to, to Romero afterwards, after he'd gone to the monitor. And I was like, I thought, I thought maybe it will give a yellow for it. But it, it was the force of the challenge, irrespective of him getting the ball first. And obviously he got the ball. The ball flew away. But just going through, do you, can you see why, why Oliver gave the red for Romero? Or you, do you agree with HG? No, I agree with HG. What are you meant to do? Have a little waft in it and hope that you get um, like a little nick on it? Or are you meant to go through and win the ball? You know, if we're, force is force. If you're trying, you're trying to win a football match and trying to win a tackle, uh, you know, and he won the ball. I, I mean, it's not even one of those, you know, we've seen seen plenty where we, we're saying, oh, it looks worse, slowed down. It didn't look worse, slowed down. It looked exactly what it was, which was a tackle in the area where he won the ball. And then, yes, he's gone through and he has connected with Enzo's shin. I didn't see any Chelsea players appeal for it. Um, obviously, I know there was, you know, the goal followed soon after, but normally instantly you, you see arms in the air and everything. I didn't think it was a... Uh, a red card. I didn't think it was penalty. There's no way that that will get overturned, though. And I'm guessing that is it a three-game ban for that? Does that count as violent conduct? I, I imagine it's how the ref. Did. I don't think did Curtis Jones get three. I think he did for what happened to him. So I would assume that Romero would get three as well. It's it's, it's just crazy. Like I could understand a penalty and a yellow card for that. Yeah, but I, 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 yeah. I, I can't understand a red card. Yes, he goes through and he kicks him on the shin, but like. It's a contact sport. Like, like you, you could have said to me, the doggy gets a red card for what he did because he was two foot in the air and, and it's reckless, right? If, if Sterling's leg is in the way, then it's an awful, awful challenge. And the fact that Sterling's leg isn't in the way doesn't really change that to me. He probably could have gone for that one. That would be fine with had that been a red. But to me, Romero's challenge, when he wins the ball, at no point is that a red. That could happen anywhere on the pitch. And it's basically now incentivizing players to not go full-blooded because then you might get taken out and then the other team might be down to... Like, I, I don't want to see that kind of football. I don't want to see a football that says, no, we can't have challenges. Like, he it, it, it wasn't off his feet. He had one foot planted. He swings at the ball. He misses the ball. It's a penalty. Fair enough. But he gets the ball... It, it, it just seems overkill. Like VAR is weird in lots of, I don't, I don't want to say that word, but you know, it is weird and it, it operates differently in different countries. And obviously England having a history of being more kind of rough football, a bit tough tackling. That's, that's what we all grew up playing with. That's what we all grew up understanding. And we know English football is different to, to other countries. And yet we've decided we want to take that out of our game. And I don't really understand that. Like, injuries happen regardless so I, can't, I i don't think you'd even use that as a as a reason to say no we've got to stop it because we don't want players getting injured well of course we don't want players getting injured but they're going to win the ball no one no one can sit there and tell me that romero's trying to kick enzo he's not he's not trying to the fact that it happens well that's part of the game like players get kicked all the time uh, it, it just feels like we're trying to to eradicate something that no one i mean it's, the players didn't claim it Enzo went down in a heap. Well, of course he did because he got kicked. But it's not a red card. That, that that shouldn't end someone's game as far as I'm concerned. So you think the Udogi challenge was worse than the Romero challenge? I, I think it was closer yeah, to a was. red card. Yes. Yeah, definitely closer yeah, to I a agree. red card. Because he's, off, he's, he's yeah, in the air. He's got two, two-footed. I mean, sorry, Steb, go on. Yeah, well, I was agreeing with you. Yeah, it, it, it was it was two-footed. There was a degree of it being out of control, even though he won the ball. So there was one of those ones where they say it's uh, uh, you know between a yellow and a and a red. 
I, I, I wouldn't have liked it if it was a red, but I could have understood it for, far more than the, the Romero one, which for me, like I said, he he clearly won the ball. It's not like he went over the top. You know, when, when you mentioned the Curtis Jones um, incident, he went over the top of the ball. His leg, his leg was off the ground. So that's why he went over the top of the ball. So in that respect, he's out of control. That you could you could you could make an argument for that with the Romero one. There's no element there that I think he's out of control because he he wins the ball and the follow through with force is what connects with with Enzo. But as we said right at the start, what's he meant to do? Have a little waft? It doesn't work if you're going to win the ball cleanly in the area. Win the ball cleanly. That's exactly what he did. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I thought it was outrageous to be honest. Um, and when the the apparently they they put it up in the on the big screen in the stadium and I mean obviously it's full of Spurs fans but the stadium was not happy um, and I'm glad they put it up in the stadium because it, it's just made a little bit of a well let's be honest it made a mess of the game didn't it? Well, I think we were also doing our best to make a mess of it mess of it as well. Uh, I think we played our part that like like I said earlier we did kind of lose our heads, lose our discipline, lose our shape and let Chelsea back into it when we didn't need to. I don't know if um, which injury came first. I think it was both at the same time that Van der Ven and Madison were subbed. Um, was that, am I right there? there yeah. Seb? So yeah. Matt, Matt, Madison had got his injury, I, I think, and was actually off the side of the pitch, I think. So at that point, we were at nine men anyway. Um, the ball comes over and Van der Ven, I mean, they, they say, I'm lucky I've never had a, a, a hamstring injury, certainly not one like that. They say it's like you feel like you've been shot, and that's exactly what it what it looked like. It just, he just, you you know, you could almost feel it for him. It looked in a lot of pain. The it looks to me, um, from what we're reading, that if a serious hamstring injury could be anything up to four months. I mean, that's horrific. Um, but I'm going to say it, and I'll probably get abuse for this. But when you are standing around for 10, 15 minutes. And then when you're not standing around, you are high intensity sprinting. Then you're standing around again. And then you are high intensity sprinting. The risk of muscle injuries, particularly hamstrings that go cold, has got to be a lot more than if you are just playing intensive football for 20, 25 minutes. There was, before the band of end injury, about nine minutes of standing around I, in, within the, the first 35. So a quarter of the time, players are standing around. I don't think that's good. I don't know what anyone else thinks, but I, I think the more we stop games, as long as we are stopping them for, the more we are going to see this. It reminded me, I, I think I've got this right, the very first time that Spurs were involved in VAR was at Wembley, and I think it was a cup game against Rochdale. And I remember the game stopping for four or five minutes, and I think we won the game comfortably at 5 6 nil, something like that. And they interviewed Danny Rose afterwards, and he said, but the first thing he said was, we can't have stoppages like this. People are going to get seriously injured. And for me, that played out tonight. Do you agree with that, HG? Do you think that the stopping and starting and the, the nature of Van der Ven's game led to, to what happened? It clearly doesn't help. I mean, to say there's a cause and effect is a bit crazy because he was the only one. And he's not the only one who sprints and he's not the only... But it does feel... As if, yeah, like it probably wouldn't have happened without it. I mean, the, the whole Romero red card penalty decision took a few minutes because they looked at two or three different things. It wasn't that long after that the injury mm. happened. And so, yeah, you, you can't help but think that th the two are somewhat related because, again, players, when you play for 45 minutes straight, you are concentrating for straight, you are moving all the time. You're not standing around waiting, looking at the screen like all the fans are. And that's basically what the players end up becoming at that point. They become spectators waiting for the referees to make their decision. And it just feels a little... I, again, like I, I don't want to get on VAR's case because, again, I don't feel like they got actually that much incredibly wrong. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like as I said a, a few minutes ago, it was 1-1 one, one, and Spurs were going to 10 at half time. And to me, that was probably fair. The fact they got there in this weird and wacky way okay, yeah, that sucks, but it was probably fair that that was the case. But yeah, to, to lose Romero, and we all think, okay, we've lost him for a month, and then within five minutes, we lose Van der Ven. I mean, this was every Spurs fan's biggest nightmare. Like, mm. one 
felt bad, but to lose them both, and as, as I've said, for probably a significant amount of time. Like, I can't remember the last time I saw a hamstring injury end with a player like that, like absolutely on the floor, writhing in pain because he just something terrible was happened. We're looking at like Ryan Sissignon hamstring time off. I don't think it's going to be a few weeks and then we can, you know, maybe bring him back. He'll be out for a significant amount of time. And of course, yeah, okay, we have a, an international break in a couple of weeks, but after that, we play like eight games in five weeks. So the games will come thick and fast. And I suspect that Van der Fem will miss all of those. Romero won't, he'll miss a month. Um, but the other one, Van der Fem, will, will, it, it's a massive, massive blow to what Spurs want to do this season. Hmm. I said, like he, she says, this was our biggest fear. Like the the central defensive partnership of Romero and Van der Ven have been excellent. Probably the best, or well, one of the best central defensive partnerships in the league right now. And the fear was always there because we don't have that strength in depth. We, we did bring subs on, so we brought on Emerson Royale. I think we brought on Eric Dyer at the same time, and and eventually Hoybier came on for a, a, a completely revamped defensive line. But that it just exposes. Our, our lack of depth uh, at the back, uh, um, and I'm not, like I'm not quite, gonna... I'm not quite sure if I agree with that because it, unless you're Man City who can, you know, rest Diaz and bring in Stones or Ake or Guardiola or whoever seem to, you know, seem to have basically two two first class back lines. I don't think there are many teams who can lose their two key centre backs and replace them with two like for like centre backs. Um, I've slated Eric Dyer sometimes, but it doesn't uh, deserve half the abuse that, that he gets. And he's a more than competent centre-back. He might not be the one that we want to play. He might not have the legs that I think our centre-backs need in terms of pace. Um, but he's more than more than competent. And if you look at a Liverpool or an Arsenal or a Man United, um, you know, United is a good is a case in point. We've lost um, centre-backs and they're playing Johnny Evans and Harry Maguire. Um, I'd, I'd like to suggest Dyer's better than that. Who will partner him is interesting uh, because obviously Emerson came came in briefly and then um, you know, when when particularly when Udogi got sent off, we saw Hoybier, um play at the back, which obviously isn't isn't his role. Um, it's going to be interesting, um, and it, like you say, it's the worst case scenario that I think any Spurs fan. If you you know, I think when we the comments on some of the Slack chat and the WhatsApp chats that we have were don't really care about the game, more concerned about the games going forward because we haven't got these two now for, for, for a decent length of time. But it's time for someone else to step up. And to be fair, despite the result tonight, I thought we saw players step up, all, all of them, absolutely all of them. There's no one there that, um, you know, apart from the, the two uh, obvious um, exceptions, uh, but the players who, who were left on that pitch um, were exceptional. Um, I'm hoping, and I might be wrong, but I'm hoping the Madison one was precautionary and also slightly tactical. Um, you know, once we've gone down to 10 and he had a slight knock and Van der, we had to make the Van der Ven change, it probably did make sense to take Madison off um, and go with that um, kind of 4-3-2 formation that we, uh, that we then uh, deployed for the rest of the first half. Yeah, and HG, there were 12 minutes of added time in that second half, which is that a record for, for first? Or oh, the other one would be us as well, anyway. But um, it just, it still added to the tension um, that, that you thought, well, if we go in at half time, one all, regroup uh, and, and, and start the second half uh, with a bit more calm and composure. Um, but uh, but yeah, that, that, it, was a, it was a crazy, crazy end to that, sec that first half. It, it was a crazy end. And like, I don't think any of us really expected changes to be made at half time, but I, I suspect we all thought that maybe we wouldn't be quite so gung ho playing a high line in the second half. I mean, like when Liverpool went down to 10 against us, they didn't really change what they did too much, um, but they had pace up top and, and would play on the counter. Like Salah was obviously very good in that game. Spurs don't have that. And I know, and Ange knows that we don't have it. So he, I guess, at that point, he felt the best way to win the game was to was to play in Chelsea's half, and I, I understand that. And if you look at the game, okay, yeah, the the final result won't show it, but in the ninety second minute, we almost got a two two. And I'm sure had we had Sun scored that, then maybe we would have defended deeply. But it does it we it did feel that we were asking for trouble. Like Doggy's not stretching for a ball 
to get his second yellow card if we're not playing that high line, if he doesn't think that there's a huge amount of space behind him and he has to win the challenge. Yes, it was naive to make the challenge and he knew it instantly. But I do think that, bearing in mind at that point, what our back four was what, Daria, Roy, Poro, and, and Udogi, like there's not a great deal of pace there. Um, and it, it just felt like we were, like a half block is fine. You know, we don't want to defend like Mourinho did. We don't want to defend like Conte did. That's not going to be Spurs. But it did feel that we didn't quite have to be. I mean, I felt like Chelsea players were going to be played on because they were in their own half when the ball was played, not because our line was so high. I don't think it could be any higher. And I think that was a, a, I don't want to say a negative of the second half, but I felt like maybe it wasn't as pragmatic as we could have been. Excuse me. It was certainly the talk, well, one of the, the key talking points from that second half was was that high line, Seb, that it did look like we were inviting trouble and and Chelsea kept doing it. And, and to Vicario's credit, he he dealt with it. I thought he was probably our man of the match uh, based on that second half. Just he kept play, almost playing like a, a sweep up, just to sort of just coming out and cleaning up like when the when the defense was breached. And for I think it was what for 20 minutes we um we held out, I think. Like, again, I need to check the bloody times of the goals, but I, I thought we were dealing with it okay, and, and but it was still such a risky way to play. And get a beer. Yeah, well, it was a risk. Um, I'm completely, um, I completely don't mind. Um, I'd, I'd rather lose the game tonight, how we lost it, than lose it um, Jose style or backs to the wall. I never felt like we were backs to the wall. I felt like we were trying to spring traps and I felt like the high line was uh, a method of springing the trap. Vicario knew that his job was to, to, to play that kind of sweeper role, did it on a number of occasions. As HG said, there was one instance particular, I think it was Cucurella, where he made a run from within his own half and got through. But to be fair, Porro was rapid uh, and got back uh, and Vicario um, did a fantastic kind of diving, diving save on top of the ball. Um, there was just, uh, Gary Neville pointed it out in the commentary, there was just an instance where Chelsea were loading over onto the right-hand side um, and getting three or four players and then releasing the, the 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 deepest of those. So they were kind of knocking it about very slowly, very slowly. And then the, the deepest man was making the um, the quick run. And that that's how they got through. And, and Sterling got, got through. I have to say, I didn't see a lot of difference in terms of beat placement, if you like, um, with the, the Sterling um, goal and Son's. They looked identical to me. So we, that's how far or how close, I should say, we are We are talking with Son putting us 2-0 up before all of the madness and uh, and Sterling setting up Jackson for the, for the second goal. It was incredibly close. But with regards to the high line, I kind of don't have any problem with it. it I, the, the crowd loved it. I loved it. The commentators loved it. It's refreshing. We are just going to try and attack teams and you can take us down to 10 men, nine men, and we'll still carry on playing the same way. There is part of me that is obviously very um, nervous is the wrong word, but um, you know, I don't know. Obviously we don't know who's going to play in the games going forward now with these injuries and, and bans, but there's also a large part of me that kind of thinks it doesn't matter that the, these players and this squad and this team and, coming from the manager, play one way and they're going to carry on playing that. And it doesn't matter if you bring Eric Dyer into the team or even Ashley Phillips into the team or um, if we're missing Madison because the players that come in are being coached to play this way in this method. And all right, they might not do it as well as some of the some of the starting team, but it'll be a fun watch. It'll be enjoyable and we'll give teams a game. And bloody hell, we gave Chelsea a game down to nine men. I actually felt we played better with nine than we did with ten. Um, mm. you know, we created more more chances, um, and obviously, when Eric Dyer hit that volley um, <sighs> from the from the edge of the area, oh my god! Uh, yeah, my wife told me off again because so I uh, screamed <laughs> quite quite loudly. And then it, it well, it was horrible because it was so clearly offside, and yet they took another two minutes to to review that. Uh, and for a, for a brief brief second, it looked like he might be level. God knows how yeah, they yeah. show it from so many weird angles. Um, yeah, no, no idea. But oh, if that if that had gone in, oh my goodness, 
I mean, yeah, I there think, was a foot. Go on, sorry, go on, I, th I think Jack makes a great point here, right? I mean, again, I have no issue trying to do it, but when you don't have the pace of Van der Ven and you don't have the nous of Romero, going back three, five yards isn't going to kill what you're trying to do. It just means that there's less of a gap for Vicario to to marshal. I understand that he like, I, like he's not going to change, and no one wants him to be like Liverpool did against us when they went nine at the back and basically said try and beat us. That's clearly not what he's going to do. But there's to be a middle ground in, on occasions like this. I mean, this was very very like we won't see this again. Like you won't see an occasion where you've got where you lose your two main centre halves and the sub is not someone who you think can play that style. Because in January, Dyer may will end up going if we can buy another one in or bring some others in. So it just feels like, okay, I get it, right? This is who you are, Ange. That's brilliant. But you know, it, 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 it was a matter of time before Chelsea oh. scored. It was probably quite embarrassing that it took them so long to do it because the ball was on all day long. Like, if you play a high line and you don't press, which we weren't doing, then... Frankly, you're just you're just traffic cones. Like any decent I, I disagree. Team play around that. I, I disagree. I, di I disagree entirely with that. Uh, yeah, there's a, a good chance tonight that we could. Well, small chance, good chance. I don't know that we sitting here talking about a two-two potentially. You know, Dyer was uh, inches inches from being on side. Son is inches, inches from equalising, like you said, in the 92nd, 93rd minute. But neither of those um, happened because I've, they played a high line, Seb, did they? No, really? I, agree, I agree. I do agree. I, I, I agree with that. But I felt like we were trying to spring traps constantly. And I felt like it, it almost worked. Yes, we needed Vicario to, to pull off some, some good saves. But I think the, the issue for me is is if you go and sit nine behind the ball, eight behind the, behind the ball as, as it was, then you are not giving Chelsea anything to think about. And I think the reason why Chelsea struggled um, and and even struggled after they went two one up was they they were almost confused. It was it was it was hard for them to to work out what to do. Pochettino could see it, but when you're on the pitch and you you were thinking to yourself, we are we're two men up here, and yet. We're struggling to make anything, anything real. You know, it was balls over the top to 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 run onto, or balls through to run onto that Vicario uh, or Porro or others dealt with. Then you are posing problems. Nine, nine, but or eight, not or nine behind the ball didn't pose any problems. You know, Liverpool did it a different way with us when they they tried to win set pieces. And to be fair, that that's pretty much what what we did in an attacking sense. But when you're confusing the opposition like that. I, I had no problem with it. I would much prefer to have seen that tonight than to have seen um, backs against the wall. Because backs against the wall, I'll tell you now, we would have gone 2-1 down on 50 minutes and then it's a long old evening. And, and, and this is, I, I, I wasn't saying we should do the whole Mourinho. I, I mean, I said specifically, Mid. I don't want Mourinho. I don't want Conte. But there's a middle ground here, right? I mean, where most teams defend... <laughs> Should have been okay. It, it just like again, look, I don't want to hark on about it because it doesn't really matter. Like a two-one defeat to me is almost the same as a four-one defeat. I just felt that a two-one defeat would have merited the kind of performance that the two teams showed. Right? Chelsea had eleven the whole game, twelve if you want to be really narky and include the ref. But frankly, like two-one, Chelsea weren't much better than Spurs. They had more of the ball, but they were hopeless with it. But it finished four-one because they finally figured out that. All it needed was a simple ball and then a simple ball across. And that was down to the high line. So, like, it, it, it sucks because, like, I, I love that how the team played. I love that we were that kind of Spurs. Like, we want to play Spurs football. We don't want to defend for our lives ever. But the, 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 it, it's not just be naive or defend deep as if you're Italian. And that's what I felt like Spurs showed today. On that as well, like I said, you mentioned this earlier, the, the crowd. I thought the crowd was superb tonight, that, that we stuck with the team. We, we could see that we were trying. And I think that did galvanise the team as well. Because when, when these things do happen, when we go down, you lose a player or two players and you have these injuries, it can it can affect morale on the pitch, obviously. But, but the crowd was superb. And I think they were reacting to the way that we were playing. Maybe not so much the high line, but just reacting to the trials and tribulations that we had through the game. And I, I did do think spurred us on a lot. Oh yeah, absolutely. I thought the crowd. Were, I mean, obviously, I would have loved to to have been there, but you could 
you can hear it through the uh, through through the TV screen, um, and then even at the end, you know, uh, they said <laughs> there's not often you see teams lose four one at home and, and get a standing ovation. So, um, crowd are fantastic. Yeah, you know, everyone's bought into this, and and I think it's important we, that we realise this. This was the first time that Ange could have deviated from supposed Ange, yeah, Ange ball. This high press, this high high line, high high intensity attacking because there was every reason to, and yet he didn't. Well, that kind of tells you everything we need to know. And it hasn't worked for us tonight, all right? And there are arguments to say that maybe it was naive, maybe maybe it's the, it was the wrong decision. But I like the fact that I think we'll, 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 if anyone had any doubts before, before tonight about if he would deviate at all from the way that he wants to play football and the way that we all, let's be honest, want to see Tottenham play football, then that dispelled it tonight. There, you know, we just that's how we're going to play get used to it sometimes it won't um pay off and also tonight i think there is also uh, a um maybe you could say excuse me maybe you could say that the way we were playing even in the first 10 15 minutes maybe led to some of the disastrous things that that happened we are playing so kind of um uh Free and easy sometimes that almost it's a little bit too free free and easy. So there there are there are arguments there. I think the doggy is a fantastic footballer, but I think sometimes he just lacks the 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 kind of you need to play free and easy, but with discipline, it's a really hard balance. Um sometimes when the discipline goes, and like I said, Vicario did a couple of things tonight. I thought Bisuma did a couple of things tonight with undisciplined uh, or ill-disciplined. Um but we're not going to change. And I, I I kind of really like it. It's something that I can get behind. Let's be honest, the last four or five years, we haven't had anything that we can get behind. Um, so, you know, I've seen things tonight, echo of echoes of glory and all that. I'm not quite sure I'm going to go, go that far, um, but I was still proud tonight. Those nine players put in a hell of a shift. And as I said before, they were inches, inches from coming away with something. So, hmm. you know, re, let, let's try and be a little bit cheerful. Now, I feel like Porro kind of epitomised how we were in that second half because, like, I mean, let's be honest, he has the shit housery that people like, right? I mean, he, like, he yeah. was, yeah. you know, falling over to win free kicks and cheering every tackle and being that kind of Latin influence that we we think the best teams have. But he's also quality on the ball. Like those chances that came in the second half, the one that Benton Kerr almost stuck in was because Poro can actually whip a ball in and set, the set piece delivery was good. So like, I, I'm sure that Poro is the type of player that other teams would hate, other fans would hate, but he, he manages to kind of marry those two qualities of saying, look, I am good on the ball, but I will do whatever I can to win that game. And so that second half, like I mean, it's, it's upset. Until Chelsea scored, you did kind of think and they're, they're, they're going to fluff this. That they're not actually going to do it. They should have done it long before they scored. But every time they messed up, you got that little bit more of this. This could happen. And as we saw, once they got the two one, we had chances. Like Dyer had the goal that was disallowed, but Bentancur should have headed it in probably. Or it was kind of that between height where you don't want to. Do you go with your feet or do you go with your head? And then so we we had moments. Sun's effort was what. 2-1, it was 92nd minute. Had that gone in, uh, we'd be sitting here most likely with a 2-2 thinking, how on earth did that happen? And is a genius. So like, it, 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 they are small margins, but I, I love that this team, like, I mean, I joked about it in the comments right at the start tonight, but it's clearly a family. Like they play for each other. They play for the manager and the fans that are there, you show them anything and and, and they will feed off of that. It's not as if the fans need to wait for the team to make the effort because the effort is there. So you you show that love back to them and you will push them an extra... You know, it will feel like you're the 12th man. And I, I can't remember the last time we saw that at Spurs. It feels a long time ago that the team were doing everything they could and the fans were just like, this is insane. I mean, you said it yourself. We, we clapped them off after losing 4-1. Like that's that is not Spurs. That's not the Spurs I know. That's not the Spurs home fans I know. <laughs> so we're clearly on to something, but it's it's going to be those small tweaks that will help us be where we want to be. 
So moving forward, Seb, now with these with these injuries and suspensions, what do you think our back four is going to look like? Is it Wolves our next game? I should have checked. <laughs> it is Wolves, yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, can I just ask one uh, or say one thing? The only thing, uh, talking about Ange and any mistakes that he made tonight in the high line, the only thing that I didn't like tonight is I thought Kulusevski should have stayed on another 10 minutes. It was the only thing. But I am guessing that if, I think I've got this right, that we would have, made three changes or used three changes change I don't know what you call them breaks if you like already and so that if he was going to take Kulusevski off at some point he had to do it had to do it then at the same time I I, I, I yeah I like uh, that was an unfortunate thing with the you know obviously making a change after Romero and all that type of stuff because I think Kulusevski got us a few yards further up the pitch and and creates problems for the for the opposition as as I said before. With regards to the back four, well I'm guessing it'll be Porro right, Davis left if he's fit. If not, it'll be Emerson. And then it'll be Dyer. And I would imagine I, I think I think we probably have to see Phillips come in. Uh, I, yeah. I, or or I mean Dorrington is the one that um from the from the U team. Um I don't see there is any other option. I don't think we can go into Wolves playing Dyer and Hoybier. I don't think that's going to be um, uh, a thing. And also, if you sign these players, and as Ange has said, if you sign these players, you play them because you you have faith in them and and belief in them. And I think it'd be a bit of a setback for 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 a kid if um, you're playing a central uh, defensive midfielder in in his place because you, you you're there for saying you don't trust him. Um, I think from what I've seen of Wolves, they don't have. Um, too much pace up top. Is it Kalajic? I think um, mm-hmm. starts for them, and he's he's a big lad, and he's a handful. Um, but their pace obviously comes from the from the width with uh, the likes of Neto, um, and he'll be up against Poro, I think, on on that side. And then from what I saw, I think they have Cunha. Um, is it Cunha? I got that right, Mateus. Mm-hmm. Can't think of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think um, it's not the worst game to be going into. Um, I, you know, the, I, I think they'll, they'll obviously they've got a few days to work on on what they're going to do. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I think Jack, Jack, Jack makes a good point. Like Neto, I think is injured. I think he's out for for a couple of months. He, he certainly won't play. But so Kalajic and yeah, again, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, again. I didn't know that. Okay. But you have to start Phillips. I'd be amazed if it was Dorrington or Sayers or one of the other kids. You've paid money for Phillips and just said publicly that Phillips is a first team squad player. Um, I don't think he said that about anyone else. I don't think he said that about Dorrington. So Dyer and Phillips, um, I guess, would be would be your back two. But uh, again, the whole point about Spurs is we, we're designed to have the ball. So hopefully the defenders won't be doing that much defending. If our midfield is yeah. on point, and like again, we don't know if Madison's actually injured or if he was taken off, but we've got options in midfield. So really, if the midfield worked to its best, then okay, yeah, we may have to see Royal play inverted left back. Seb said earlier he did that at Palace and we were better. I agree with that. I, I think Spurs' thing that we'll have to see at Wolves and that will help us at Wolves is if we play with actual width. I saw enough from Brennan Johnson in, in the half an hour he played tonight to know I want to see more of it. So Brennan Johnson will start down the left. Who end, whoever ends up behind him, hopefully, will be irrelevant because we'll have the ball and it won't matter so much. So it, like it, it's it's easy to sit here and think, okay, we've lost our, our two centre-halves. We, we, we might be in trouble. We've got one game before a two-week break. You could, I guess we can hope that Romero doesn't injure himself for Argentina again. But still, we've got... you know. It's three weeks until we play Villa. By that point, you know, Dyer and Phillips would have had almost certainly three weeks of training together to get used to each other. So it, 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 we, I don't think it's 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 right right now to, to, to hold up the white flag. Like, obviously, we're going to struggle over the next six weeks until maybe until January the 1st when we might be able to get players in. But at the whole point of Angebo is that we don't defend. So we don't, you know, people yeah. said at the start of the season, you know, Van der Fens only got two two days worth of training before the first game. He's never going to be understand what Ange wants from him. Well, he came in and was our best defender, right? Better than Romero. I love Romero, but Van der Fen, it felt like he'd played at Spurs for years. Mm-hmm. So we don't, like, y- yes, Phillips is a kid, but let's not be too negative about it. Tonight was hopefully a one-off. Those things hopefully won't happen 
for another two or three years that you see red cards and injuries and everything else. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's going to be a good season. It's just it's going to be more difficult than maybe we wanted it to be. Speaking of cards, I think it, also, sorry, 125 people watching, please do hit the like. Uh, it does help the channel. Uh, if you like what you're watching, just take a second to give that a flick. Um, just sorry to jump in, but do you know why Ange got booked? It did. They didn't show any arguments with the fourth official or anything like that. It looked really, he was very calm, very reserved. I just, I just found that quite, quite odd. Did you either of you see what happened? I, no I idea. I'm he was afraid. just moaning, just saying something. I, I don't know exactly what happened, but I suspect he was just talking, talking stuff on the sideline, which managers do. And I mean, at that point, Oliver had kind of lost, lost the game mm. a little bit. And so by like, What's he done? He sent a player off. He's given a penalty through VAR. Um, they need to control it somehow. And maybe by booking a manager, he thought that that would help control things. But I don't know what Ange did. I, I can't imagine it was much because Ange doesn't seem the type to really lose his rag during games. He's, you know, that, like he is the, like, well, I, I, I made a comment today on a silly BBC Facebook post, but I talked about how Arsenal and their reaction to what happened to them was indicative of how Arteta is as a person. Like mm. when they lose, like all hell breaks loose. And with Spurs, like, yeah, the fans are going to be upset because we lost to Chelsea and it's a massive game and all the rest of it. But Ange will be like, okay, next game. And that's how we need to be. Yes, it sucks, but you, we won't get anywhere by being massively negative. There were things today that I didn't like. I hope I don't see them again on Saturday lunchtime when we play Wolves. That, that to me is the, is the thing. Hmm. So JP here saying that the um, the booking was for coming out of his box, which Arteta seems to do pretty much 50 times per game and gets away with it for some reason with his silly tight trousers and his stupid haircut. So anyway. Um, hey, 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 this is this is who I am. Look, mate, I'm the one who slagged him off the most tonight. <laughs> and can do no wrong. I'm the one who's saying we shouldn't have played the high line. I don't know where you are in the show, but you haven't got to that bit clearly yet. So, look, I'm sorry. Look, I love Ange. Everyone should love Ange. But that doesn't make him perfect. He's not perfect. He would know that. We made a few mistakes tonight. But as other comments have said, we could have had a 2-2 in the 92nd minute. And that would have been, I guess, down to the way that Ange wanted to go forward. He wasn't happy. And, again, as Spurs fans, that, that's not that's not a terrible thing, surely. Hmm. One thing, Seb, um, Bentancourt got more minutes, obviously, than he did against Palace. What did you make of, of Bentancourt's performance? Uh, not too much, if I'm honest, because, um, you know, he didn't have uh, an opportunity to, to really get on the ball and, and dictate things. He was uh, another body in the in the midfield. I thought Skip, him and Skip did fine when they when they came on. I understood the changes, as I said. I would have liked to have seen Kulisewski on for, for a little bit a little bit longer. Um, just felt like he kind of buys fouls and, like I said, gets us up the pitch. Uh, he was fine. It wasn't a, wasn't a game where he was going to come on and stand out. I don't think in uh, in any way, but he was. Um, it, yeah, he was fine. I think he was the one, wasn't he, that played the ball through to Son um, towards the end. Um, so yeah, he was he was fine. I don't think he'll start. I don't think he's he's near starting yet. I think they might identify. Man City maybe as a as a game that he might start, but I thought Saar was was very very good again tonight. Um, it's going to take some knocking out of the team, I think, to be honest with you. Um, I also, I, I, there were so many of them that I thought was superb tonight. I thought Ho Hoybier was brilliant when he came on that yeah. um, deflection that he got where he knocked it over the knocked it over the bar. <laughs> he loved it. He loved it. He was like, yeah. <laughs> fair, fair play to him. You know, we we covered most of them. Porro was fantastic. Dyer, I, I thought was 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 great. Um, they, they, you know, they all. The sumo was good. Um, they, they were all, they were all fine. Um, and uh, I, you know, I think it, what HG said uh, about Saturday and, uh, and and going forwards is right. You know, we're not we're not made to defend. We're made to attack. Um, we still have some fantastic attacking options. Um, yeah, I'm. Oh, and if anyone's listening, I'd love a ticket because I can actually go on Saturday. So if anyone can <laughs> offer me a, a ticket to Wolves, uh, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I, mean, um, I know we talked about, as Seb's mentioned, the subs, but we, we brought Skip and Bentinker on, I think, with an hour gone. So it was still 1-1 at that point. And you're right, like, I mean, the, the people have said it in the comments, like, Saar can run all day. So I don't think any of us thought that he was struggling. 
And so if you, if you imagine that Saar for Skip is the logical substitution there, Bentenko for Kulusevsky probably didn't need to happen either. So it, it, like you're right. Again, we're, we're nitpicking a little bit, but if you've decided to make that after an hour, which I guess he did, I guess he maybe he made that call when Udogi got sent off and he was like, okay, I need to do something. I've only got one chance to make a substitution. I'm going to do it now. But I think that... Like Kulisevsky's ability to bring us forward could have resulted into something. Saar, as much as I love him, that's not his game, right? His game would have been to press the midfield and to maybe you know win a tackle here and there. And we 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 saw that early on in the second half. I think when Kulisevsky won the ball and Saar went forward and couldn't make the pass to to Sun that, that maybe was on. Had it been the other way around, maybe we something could have come from it. But yeah, like. Kulisevsky has played a lot of minutes this season. He's been super important to what Anne just wanted to do. Was brilliant in the away game at Luton, holding the ball up and moving us forward. So, yeah, again, if you want to nitpick, doing that after 60 minutes felt, you know, again, you, you could only assume it was because of what happened to a doggy. But, yeah, again, we'll never know. The focus has to be Wolves now. Like, tonight has gone. Chelsea will live off yeah. this for the next six months um, because they only win one game every month. I think it's been all year, pretty much. So, like, they're still mid-table. They, 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 they did okay when it was 11 versus 11, but I was actually not... I was pretty disappointed with Chelsea when they had 11 versus 9. They didn't... That, like, watching Chelsea versus 9 was like watching Spurs versus 9. We didn't look very good against Liverpool either at that point. But it, it's just that it, it, it's one game. And, and that's, that's how we have to see it. Yes, it sucks because it's Chelsea, but it is just one game. Just um, to jump in here, some quotes from Ange. We've been talking about the high line. So uh, on playing with a high line down to the, to 10 men, down to nine men even, sorry. It's just who we are, mate. I'm not going to do the accent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, please, is, Brendan, please try. <laughs> no, okay, mate. It is who we are and who we will be for as long as I'm here. If we go down to five men, we will have a go. Wow. <laughs> Love the man. Spot um, on. That's exactly what I said. No, no deviating. From the plan, and if it's a plan that we can all get behind, look, we've had we've had managers where there's no deviating from, from Conte. That was that's that's completely different because God bloody hell! I mean, I said it before. I didn't want to come on and talk after after watching Conte's games. Uh, yeah, this is this is fun. This is interesting. Tonight was it was heartbreaking in one sense, uh, but it was also a bit of fun. It was, it was still enjoyable. The crowd loved it. The crowd got behind it. They would, wouldn't have got behind it if we'd have done what Conte or Mourinho or Nuno or any of the other no. dross that we've had to watch over the last five years. And like HG said, this is a one-off. Okay, this won't happen again, similar for, for two or three years in, in terms of the events that have, that have happened tonight. So, you know, put that to bed. But come Saturday, we will play exactly the same way. And thank God we'll have 11 men on the pitch, at least to start with. <laughs> but that's true. I mean, it was weird the feeling afterwards, the emotions. Like, well, I feel proud of the team, but also a bit ashamed of of how, how things happen with the players getting sent off, and but and obviously gutted to lose to Chelsea at home, but also happy that that we played well with nine men. It, it was the roller coaster of emotions. I think sums up that 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 game. It was. Like I said, there's no run sheet. We just literally, right, right, let's talk about this game. Because how do you, how do you try and put that into words? I'm sure journalists that are very good can do so. But 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 HG, it was just a bonkers, bonkers 110 minutes, however long it was. Yeah, I mean, I, I suspect that anyone who gets paid to do this will be sitting there you know, trolling out all the cliches that they can think of. Like, this is just proof that Spurs are who they've always been. And and ball won't work. You know, you have to have more control. We didn't have any control, so you can't play that way. And and a lot of it will probably stick with people watching it. But I think as far as Spurs fans are concerned, we don't really care. Like people will write what they want to write. Like I like I I don't want to go and listen to flipping Rory Jennings gloat to the fact that he's Chelsea beat Spurs, <laughs> the only game he cares about. But that's kind of what's going to happen. And so for Spurs, it has to be. Water off a duck's back a little bit. Don't get involved. Like, yes, okay, they beat us. Well, we were down. To, do what Liverpool did to us when we beat them, right? You only beat us because we were down to nine. You only beat us because VAR got involved. All those things are true. doesn't matter if I actually <laughs> believe it or not. It's just that, that that's the way of the world. What matters, we get three points at Wolves next week, who, again, they're not they, they might have beaten City, but it, they haven't played 
that well recently. They haven't suddenly got the results. If we can get three points there, most of us will forget the Chelsea game because we'll know that, okay, we've got two massive games after the international break that we need to prepare for. Villa at home and then City away. Get something out of that. Like We're, we're going to be there or thereabouts. No, no Spurs fan genuinely thought the title was on. Certainly not in flipping November, right? Mm. So like, where, what, what do we want to achieve this season? Well, we want to be the best we can be. If that's first, great. If it's fourth, great. It, like it, it doesn't really matter. This is about this is that you know the the transitional season that Ange will talk about, like that first season in flipping Japan where they almost got relegated and then they went and won the league next year. That's the season we're in. Like he is building that squad. Johnson came on today, played today, and looked amazing in that left. Like we, we just looked a better side having someone with speed down the wing. He will play on Saturday. So you have to think that Spurs will, will will be better. Tonight was a one-off result and those things can happen. Seb, we, we were talking about the perceived injustices with, with regard to, to VAR and the referee decisions today. And I just want to sort of contrast between how our manager deals with perceived injustices <laughs> and how that guy down the road deals with them because that that rant from Arteta was hilarious but it was also quite serious and like just looking at the the long-term implications of it just undermining referees and so this is this is, we know what obviously Arteta said but it's a disgrace it's disgusting I don't want to be I'm ashamed to be part of it I'm embarrassed he, he embarrassed himself and the club that he works for this is what Ange had to say about the sending offs you have to accept the referee's decision that's how I grew up the constant erosion of the referee's authority is where the game is going to get. They're not going to have any authority. We're going to be under the, the control of someone with a TV screen for a few miles away. The, the decision is the decision. In 26 years, I've had plenty of bad decisions. I've had plenty fall in my favour. It is what it is. Done. I mean, that, 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 that's, it, it's basically arguing against VAR, but like an adult rather than like a child. Like I feel like him and Arteta would probably agree in kind of what they would like to see, but one is an adult and one isn't. And that's the thing. Like, I'm, may, may, I hope Arteta's gone out and bought some light bulbs to make himself feel better. Maybe he's got another dog. I don't know. Um, but it's it, like, we all know that VAR is not working the way it could do, the way it probably should do. But how you react to the bad things in life matters. Tonight will not change our season. Like losing 4-1 instead of 2-1 probably won't change our season because there are 29 games left. No, 27 games left, right? There's so much football to be played. That's a cliche. I don't want to say cliches. But it's it's November for crying out loud. Like who hmm. knows what will happen? So, yeah, it sucked. Of course it sucked. But, you know, I'm still Spurs. Like, we move on. That's just it, Seb. I think in a way, obviously it's never good to lose. But just to, to sort of get this sort of the... The rip off the plaster a bit and get the loss out of the way, dust ourselves down onto the next one. Is it a bit like that? How 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 are you feeling in terms of are you stoic? Ask ask me at three o'clock on Saturday. <laughs> the, the, then we'll know because I kind of you know yeah you know, I get it and you know we said it before, said it already you know it, we won't see a game like this. It's how we, we how we react and how the players that need to come in um, come into the team. Um, on Saturday, uh, react and play, and whether they're capable of, of playing the system as well as the kind of nominal starting eleven. Um, I certainly don't believe think people saying season's over, etc. Because look, we are. I don't think anyone seriously thought we were challenging for the title. Certainly, I didn't. But I said it right from the start. Second downwards is is up for grabs. We're still four points clear of fifth, I think, and even fifth is likely to get Champions League. Um, there's some big games to play. And, you know, it won't sound like a cliche, but every game's huge. Very easily go to Wolves and lose. Wolves are a good team. I think we all saw Gary O'Neill uh, talk on Sky recently, and he comes across very well. Um, but they lost to Sheffield United on uh, on Saturday. So it's not like they're not beatable. <laughs> you know, um, I, I would hope that, that we can go there and put in a performance. Um, and, I, and I believe we will in terms of, the intent with which we play, whether we come out on the right side of the result, I don't know, but um, that's that 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 will be the proof in the pudding. And, but everything that Ange has said, um, both in reaction to the refereeing decisions and in reaction to the defeat and in reaction to the way that we played, tells me that 
we will we will go and put in a performance. Those players tonight, there is such team a team ethic. You know, I hundred percent believe that they would have sat at half time and said we would do everything, you know, not to lose this game. And they did. They did everything they could with some degree of um what's the word I'm looking for? Um not naivety, because I don't think it was naive. It was a tactic. Um, but with yeah, they did everything they could to cause Chelsea problems and not lose the game. And it didn't quite work out, but it was very close. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going for an over an hour now. So unless you guys have anything to add, uh, we'll look to wrap things up. Um, HG, thank you for joining. No problem. I'm uh, not too happy to go to work again tomorrow and deal with lots of 12-year-olds <laughs> giving it large. But... Um, it always happens. I feel like when I get a week off, Spurs do well. When as soon as I come back, Spurs will have a bad result, and then I get it in the next. So, like, I'm sorry, but I went back to work today, and uh, yeah, Spurs lost. So, whenever the next time that happens, whenever we've got the first week of January, our oh, FA Cup, expect it. Expect that Spurs will lose because of that. But I've had fun on the show, and it's always good to talk about you know kind of what what can be better, right? It's not about what can be worse. It's about what can be better, how we improve. And that is Spurs. Exactly. Yeah, no, this has been therapy for me. Trust me, at halftime, as I was saying to HG before we recorded, I had this weird feeling physically, not just not just feeling bad, like just physically feeling weird. My, my, my wife made some food. I was like, I can't eat. I can't drink. I just felt weird. So this, is, this has helped me a lot. Seb, thank you for, for joining me on this, this therapeutic journey. Well, for you to say that you couldn't drink, Brendan, um, that must have been very, very emotional for you. So, <laughs> um, but, but yeah, thank you for having me. Can I just mention, if I can, football prizes, please? Please. Uh, because there is a good uh, and very uh, original Spurs prize this week. There are still tickets left, but it ends tomorrow evening. And they are doing uh, the first ever Spurs spin to win prize. So you basically enter the competition, you pay for your ticket, and depending on what number you get, a bit like a lottery, you might win a chance to spin for a Spurs shirt. And there are lots of various Spurs shirts available. There is a uh, obviously signed Benson Kerr shirt, signed Ledley King shirt, Richarlison, Saar, Van de Ven. And I don't think there'll be too many of them going about over the next few months. Uh, Solomon, Vicario and Davis. So it's 3 to enter, um, 199 mm-hmm. tickets available. And like I say, um, certain numbers win, win the prize. Um, if you are a patron, you get 15% off. And I can't give you the code out because um, obviously... <laughs> It's just for patrons. So if you'd like to be a patron, then Bren, you can you can do the Patreon bit um, and uh, and say, but you get you do get football prizes, fifteen percent discount on football prizes when you are a patron. Yes, as they've said, please do consider joining us as a patron. Uh, www.patreon.com forward slash the Cheese Room Podcast. It's just three pounds a month. That's you can't even get half a neck oil for that, and yeah, so much extra content. You're part of the Slack chat, so. We've got a great community going on. We will be having social events coming up as well in the new year, which uh, patrons will get discounted all for free. So uh, do consider becoming a patron, supporting the channel, supporting the podcast, and getting on board and joining us mad lot in the in the in the chat. Um, but thank you for joining everyone and uh, keep the faith. It's bound to happen. It wasn't. We couldn't can't win every game. We can't go the season unbeaten. But we've got an identity. We've got we've got a team. We've got a spirit. And we keep going. Until then, come on you Spurs. Up the Spurs. Come on you Spurs.